Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at a high grade kit, sort of. This kit was made back in the day when high grades could still be 1 1 hundred scale. These days it's exclusively 1 1 44th. So by today's standard, this is a no grade kit. This is the Airmaster Burst from the series After War Gundam X. Got this kit pretty cheap, always like the design, so let's see what we got with this kit. Now, right out of the box, you're going to notice one thing you have to do. Can you guess what that one thing is? If you said panel lining, congratulations, you get a cookie. Now, there is a lot of panel lining to do on this kit, but back when these kits released, panel lining was all the rage, so they put them on everything. Line it all up, and there you go. I did some painting on this kit. You could just do it with Gundam markers, I suppose, but quite frankly, I think it looks better with some painting, using some gray, some blacks, different colors, just to break up the monotony a little bit. But the legs actually do look pretty good. we got some work to do on the shoulders, however. The arms aren't that bad, except for, guess what, more panel lining. But the shoulders should have some pinstriping here. Now, they give you stickers for the front half, but not for the back, for whatever reason. You also got to paint a section for the chest, which I did at the same time. Like I said, they give you stickers for this, but the stickers look rather poor. So, I just decided to paint it as you see here. The panel lining, or the pinstripe rather, on the shoulders doesn't follow an exact pattern, so it's a little difficult to get just right. The chest piece is a little bit easier just because it's there's a line, you paint everything below that line. You also have some gold pieces, they come gold for you, but you have a little black painting to do in there as well. That you pretty much have to paint. Doing it with a gun and marker would be difficult at best. You got this big nose cone on the back here. This is going to tr use, be used for the transformation sequence, along with a giant cannon, which again you have to do some painting. And of course, a little more panel lining, although not so much on the backpack stuff. Now, once we add all the junk for the rest of the transformation, you see, the shoulder armor is now gargantuanly huge. You got these thrusters and these vents and all this craziness. As soon as I built this, and yes, you have more painting to do, lots of gray, lots of black, lots of detailing work, and yes, more panel lining, but as soon as I thought this, there is no way this is going to be able to stand up. You have two sets of cannons on each shoulder. They can move out, They are, and they are on a swivel, so you can move them side to side as you see fit. Those are actually kind of neat looking. Now, once you get the whole thing put together, you add the head, which actually looks pretty nice. They do give you a clear green piece for the eyes, which I always appreciate. Once you've got them all put together, he actually will stand. See the skirt armor here? Lots of painting, lots and lots of panel lining on the skirt armor, more than anywhere else on the kit. But he will actually stand with all that junk on the shoulders and the back. I thought there was no way he would ever be up on his two feet, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. Granted, he isn't well balanced like this. Uh, one little knock and he's falling backwards, but he is standing, so I'm impressed by that. Accessories. You're essentially getting three guns. Two beam rifles and this thing, which they call a beam missile rifle. It essentially looks like a beam shotgun with two missiles on each side. They come in hideous colors, so I repainted them. The two beam rifles in gunmetal and black and the missile launcher thing in just plain gray. Beam rifles, no trouble holding them. Three one and thumb hands. You can also hook them onto the skirt armor, Strike Freedom style. Well, considering Strike Freedom came after, I guess it's doing an Air Master style, but whatever. The point is, you can hook them on the side skirts. The missile launcher gun, a little more awkward. Does actually look real nice, but it's a little too heavy, and over time the arm will slowly go back down. But it still looks good. Now, the one reason I got this kit is it has a very cool transformation. First thing you do, flip the legs around backwards so the butt is facing forward. Raise the chest up and move that center piece in the chest out so the head can go there. You're going to bring the nose cone forward, fold out the wings that are under those vents, and bring out those cannons so they're on the end of each wing. Then you just bend the legs up and point the toes. Fairly easy and well-rounded transformation, and it looks really, really cool. 
Now there is one little thing you see on the arms there, those plugs. Well, you can take the beam rifles and <laughs> plug them in there like you did on the skirt armor, so there's two beam rifles underneath the flying flight mode. And quite frankly, this is one of my favorite flight modes in any Gundam. It really does look nice. Now another thing, there's these two pegs on the back of the leg which made no sense. Well, this is why it makes sense. This is the G-Falcon. This comes with a G-Falcon DX combo you can buy, which I've already reviewed. And in the series, they were going to have a combination Air Master Burst and G-Falcon, but we never saw it because, as some of you know, After War Gundam X was cut short about 10 episodes or so. So we never got to see it. But we can still do it in model form. They still give you all the attachments you need to hook it up to the G-Falcon. This little lever comes up, connects into the nose, and those plugs in the back of the leg plug into the bottom of the G-Falcon, so it all hooks together. And when it's all is said and done, it looks really cool. It's absolutely massive, but it looks cool. This is one of those things I'm going to put there, look at, look how neat it is, take a picture, and maybe never do it again, just because it's just gargantuan. It's such a huge thing, and I've got no place to put it. Final thoughts on this kit. I'm giving this kit a thumbs up for what it is. By today's standard, a no-grade kit. It does a lot of things well. It has good accessories. Despite all that junk on its back, it has decent balance. And it has a really neat transformation. It requires a lot of work to make this kit look good. Painting, detailing, panel lining. Lots of detail work needed here to make this kit look nice. But if you're willing to put in that work, it does end up looking pretty nice. So, good kit. Just realize this is an older style kit. You can't really compare it to today's modern kits. So don't pay a whole lot for these kits if you ever find them and you want them. Try and find a good deal and you'll enjoy them for that. Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please ask them and I will answer them as to the best of my ability. Thanks again and I will see you guys next time with another review. Oh, and uh, one more thing. I said you would get a cookie if you guessed panel lining in the early part of the review. Here you go. Here's your cookie. I got it from Laplace's box. Give yourself five points if you actually got that reference from one of my older videos. Good job.